weapons will be formed, have been formed, always been formed against you. But we need to live with the fact that they won't prosper. So don't assume that simply because you love the Lord that weapons won't be formed. There is a spirit in this world in which we are living that is anti-Christ, anti-godly, anti-holy. And I argue that evil is omnipotent, not omnipotent, yeah, omniscient. Evil knows where you are, where you've been, where you're going. And sometimes before you can get where you're going, the devil has already been there and made a mess of it. So we've got to learn how to live by faith, knowing that no weapon, notice, formed against any one of us or any group of us shall prosper. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and Jesus Christ, his Son, our living Lord and our reigning and supreme Savior. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Father. As you and your Son and Spirit are one, please allow your servant, your word and wisdom to become one, that we may affirm the eminence of your kingdom, the power of your Spirit, and the Lordship of your Son. I trust you now for preaching. Guide my mind and my mouth that I may be able to think your thoughts and clearly articulate your words. Touch, strengthen, and save in Jesus' name. Amen. To our streaming family, Deacon Coulson, Sister Coulson, uh, glad that you're there and know that we're praying for you. Sister Betty, uh, Sister Clara, to our members in Dubai and Chile, to all of you, thank you for sharing this time with us. There's several scriptures that I want to share before I proceed with a continuation of the text. An at-risk Christian. An at Risk, R I S K, Christian. At risk means the world in which we're in, the systemics, the situation, the culture, the nation, the country in which we're living. I'm arguing that we are at risk. Not at risk of being Christian, but at risk of living like a Christian. Are you listening? And I'll make that argument. Please notice a couple of scriptures with me this morning. St. Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. I will argue that evil one can be, in a pure sense, the devil or Satan or circumstances that are evil. Notice clearly our Lord teaching the disciples out of all the things and everything in the Lord's prayer, this guide for praying we say is very important and Jesus thought is essential before he closed his prayer for persons to pray. But deliver us from evil. Uh, St. Luke chapter 4, verse 2. Now, let me read 1 and 2. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Keep it up. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. 
but will, with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Endure it. So that you may be able to endure what you're not taken out of or what may or may not be taken from you. Final one, and then I'll uh, share a few more during the shamanic moments. Revelations chapter 20. <laughs> then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the keys to the bottomless pit and a great chain. He seized the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years and threw him into the pit and locked and sealed it over him so that he would deceive the nations no more until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be let out for a little while. Notice, so that he may deceive the nations. so that the spirit of evil may not deceive the nations. Work with this scripture, y'all. Verse 7, chapter 20 still. When the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, in order to gather them for battle, they are as numerous as the sands of the sea. They marched up over the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from heaven and consumed them. Verse 10, and the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and false prophets were. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. That there is that spiritual understanding that there is a spirit in this world that will seek to deceive the nations. Evil is not only the personification uh, in a devil uh, or Satan or a trickster or a tempter, uh, but it is also a spirit that is active in conglomerates. Can I talk like that? And the text clearly says in Revelations that there is a spirit that will seek to deceive the nations. I want to talk about Christians at risk. Um, work with me. I've got a few more notes than I like, um, but I need these to say and make the case for the morning. Now, if I don't go quite as far as some of you think I ought to go, just go down to the gallery and get a tape, and uh, then you may get a little more than what you may get this morning in terms of celebration. Amen? If that tape is not good, then go get another one, and if after about three or four, uh, hopefully you'll have one that you can use. At risk, Christians. James K. Polk won the presidential election in 1844. Uh, he was known as the expansionist president of these United States because this is when there's this conquest of Texas and New Mexico and that whole California territory as we were battling Spain and uh, the Mexicans and driving the Indians into the hills. Pope, when he was elected, uh, uh, Willard Fillmore, uh, who was a senator from New York at the time, who became president after the untimely death of Zachary Taylor, um, Willard Fillmore prayed during um, 
the inauguration of James Cake Polk. And he said these words, may God save our country for it is evident that the people will not. Eighteen forty. I could pray that prayer in 2018. Uh, I'm come strong again this morning, so I need y'all to pray with me and work with me through this. May God save this country. For when I look at the nations and the deceptive spirit in people, In leadership, it is obvious that people will not. Deception, evil. Hermel a preacher who preached on the 40s and 50s, very popular in German, in Germany, um, preached during the time of the rise of the Third Reich, Adolf Hitler became known in the United States when his works were translated uh, in the 50s and 60s. Um, he preached a sermon from this same text, but deliver, but deliver, but deliver us from evil. And he apologized to his congregation because he said most of them were too intelligent and too sophisticated to believe in the devil. And so he apologized to those very smart, intelligent, bright people for talking about something uh, like a devil that nobody believed in. I don't apologize this morning. Any global religion, all world religions, will find, you will find an element in those religions whether it's the ancient religion of the Babylonians or the, or the Assyrians or the Egyptians, whether you go to the continent of Africa or Asia, uh, show me a world religion and I will show you a tenet in that religion where they grappled with evil. They didn't all call it the devil, but they all knew that in the world in which they lived, there was something that was antithetical to God, goodness, righteousness, and holiness. In the Christian faith, we find that it is evil. The evil one, as personified in devil or Satan or serpent or Lucifer, just different names, the evil circumstance, uh, the world in which we live there, is a element, there is an element, a spiritual element within this world that is ungodly. Um, whether you believe it or disbelieve it does not negate the fact that we live in a world where there has always been and there is deceptive evil in our midst. Um, there's a young lady who was in this administration and um, she traveled on a campaign trail and then in December of last year we stopped seeing her. Um, we all wondered what had happened. Um, her name is Manigault Newman. I believe I've said that correctly if I, if I read She's no longer with the administration. It lasted less than a year. And uh, when she left, they offered her uh, a contract. In my terms, it was professional domestic services. You see, if you got a degree, you just can't be a domestic. You've got to have your professional domestic. They offered her a contract. Well, 
President Trump's son's wife offered her a contract, $15,000 a month. Um, and all she had to do was one, say no nothing negative about President Trump and or any member of his family or cabinet. Two, say nothing negative about Vice President uh, Pence and his family and her cabinet and uh, do some professional type experiences and, uh, and can I talk plain? And be the Negro up front. She turned the contract down. She has now published a book entitled Unhinged. Uh, and I think this morning she's on TV. What's that TV show? What's that, some show Crossfire or something? Meet the Press or something comes on. Uh, she's on TV this morning talking about her book. This Huckabee son, this lady, has already come out. Well, I don't know where she's coming from. She's part of the administration and seems uh, she was all right while she was in there. But now she's just going to no longer uh, with us. She's, I don't know where the book comes. It's unfounded. Next. Um, you know the lady that I'm talking about. This young lady now, who has been displaced, Miss Newman, in her book entitled Unhinged, she said, and she just said Trump, didn't say President or President Donald, said Trump is unqualified, narcissistic, racist, and a bigot, direct quote from the Charlotte and Observer, 8, 11, 8, 18. When did she find that out? <laughs> I had a dear friend who passed away, and she said her mother always told her that some people have to eat a whole cow before they know they had beef. text that Christians are living in a world where you're at risk, where we're dealing with deception, not only of individuals and by individuals, but nations are being deceived uh, and hindered from being what God would have us to be. 1 Thessalonians 2 and 18. Uh, what does it say this morning? For we wanted to come, this is Paul talking to the Christians of Thessalonica. For we wanted to come to you um, certainly. I, Paul, wanted again and again, but Satan blocked our way. Look at that again. But Satan blocked. Paul speaking to the Christians of Thessalonica. That I wanted to come and visit, I wanted to come and share, but Satan blocked our way. King James says, but Satan hindered us. Amplified text says, but Satan hindered and impeded us. Contemporary English says, but Satan always stopped us. What is hindering you from being who you know you are? What's hindering you from being happy or simply enjoying your life? Talk to me, somebody. When you look at your life, what has been your biggest hindrance? You notice I didn't say who. And whenever you dare to do something positive and, and holy and good, whenever you dare to just say, I'm going to change and turn my life around, you will find you'll be confronted by hindrances. Things that will seek to impede or stop or hinder your progress. You feel stuck? How long have you felt like that? The text says, Satan hinders. It hinders. It hinders. It hinders. It hinders. 
Genesis chapter 2, verses 24 and 25. Adam and Eve were just now enjoying the bliss of uh, all that God had blessed them to be in this garden of Gethsemane, this new place of utopia, this ideal place, these ideal circumstances. Uh, they're happy to be there and if you notice the text in verse 25, it says that as they looked at one another, they could look at one another without any shame. They didn't have to try to cover up anything. They were just, they were just happy and, and at peace. And, and when you look at 225, then go directly to 3 and 1. And you will find that it says, and the serpent, more subtle than any creature in the garden, approach the woman. And women, you've got a bad rap on this one. Um, we male writers and biblicalists and others, we've given women a bad rap and dumped evil on Eve. Ain't that ain't, but with this, uh, um, most, oh, don't say that, Cliff Jones, that's not, I shouldn't say that. Uh, uh, sometimes insecure men don't always write with integrity. And in their particular culture, they weren't insecure that that's just the way it was. But, and they dumped that, and, and, and people now still try to dump that and talk about the woman ought to be submissive. Uh, said, Paul said, yeah, Paul never was married. And if, he, and if Paul had married a sister, he wouldn't have talked like that. <laughs> if Paul had married one of y'all in here, Paul, <laughs> hey, can I talk play? I'm watching it, I'm watching it, I'm watching it. <laughs> they were doing well. They had everything that they could desire. God had given it to them. Until the deceptor says to Eve, didn't God say that you could have more, Cliff's words, than what you have? Huh? You know the tree in the middle of the garden? <laughs> Do, don't you want more? When are you satisfied with enough? When is enough enough? Satan, that spirit, will wreak havoc within you about what you deserve what you don't have, what is enough. You deserve more. You're as good as anybody else. We'll, we'll rob you of enjoying what you have. What's hindering you? From being happy today. Whew, it was hot outside. Yeah, it was hot. It was hot when you came in here. It's going to be hotter when you leave. And it was hot yesterday when you walked to the mall. <laughs> On the heels of enjoying bliss, immediately Satan shows up to question their enjoyment of what they have. Job chapter 1, 2, and 3. Do, do you hear God? Speaking to the heavenly host about Job being an upright and, and good man, a good brother. He would sacrifice when his children would have a party. He would sacrifice less perchance they had done something that wasn't pleasing in God. God said, this is my beloved servant in whom I'm, there's nobody that ain't a brother in Charlotte like Job. Job was doing well. But it was while Job was doing well that he was confronted by a hindrance. He lost all of his security. How? Satan shows up. All his 401k gone, TSA gone, retirement gone. They're talking about cutting Social Security and Medicare. They, 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 gone, 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 family gone, children dead, wife questioning his integrity with God. show up immediately during your times of bliss.
less than blessings. Luke chapter 4. I've, I've looked over this, uh, Reverend Paul. Uh, I had looked over this for a number of years. Uh, Luke 4. Uh, I knew that Jesus had been tempted three times, but when I looked at 4.2 uh, of St. Luke, it says for 40 days and nights, Jesus was tempted. Not just three times, but 40 days. Satan is relentless. Now, y'all can play it off. Say, oh, Reverend Jones, I, you, know, um, you know, I'm like my uncle. Well, your uncle may have had some problems. Like, you have it now, so maybe you better learn from uncle. I'm sorry, I'm talking about nobody's family. <laughs> Evil is no respecter of persons. Job lost everything, hindrance. Jesus was tempted with the things that he needed most in priority, bread. Satan will attack bread. What do you mean? Your security. Nations are battling over bread. Tariffs issue in Turkey. Issues in Russia. Issues with China. Issues in America. Over bread. Slavery was over bread. Lie when they say it was a line of demarcation. It was chattel slavery and ownership, bread. Hindrances in life are a part of life. So, what are you going to do when you have your hindrances? Hindrances. Uh, be, with, be patient with me a minute with this one. Hindrances. Things that seek to rob us of our dignity and our pleasure, evil in nations, in systemics, in, in, in systems, in, 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 in politics. Uh, I'm not saying everybody in politics is demonized. You know, I, I'm not saying that. And hear me clearly on that. There are some good Republicans. There are some good Democrats. There are some ungodly Democrats. There are some ungodly Republicans. There are some ungodly independents. There's always been an issue in America. As it relates to power and voting, hindrances. Read carefully when you go back. Ah, oh, help my mind, Lord. If you go back to William Fillmore when he was running, one of the issues for out of Buffalo, New York, New York. You know one of the issues that he had? Immigrants voting. Who are the immigrants? Germans. Germans, 1840s and 50s. Who was a real issue in New York? 40s and 50s and 60s, Catholics. We've always had a way of demonizing a group of people for our own aggrandizement. That's evil. You call it politics if you want. It's ungodly and it's evil. And we need to call it what it is. I, uh, working on a sermon these two weeks and I'm still not finished um, and I was working and, and reading some current events and I've been thinking and wrestling with this and I'm, I'm struggling with, with what's going on in our nation uh, and, and within our country within our state of North Carolina and uh, when I looked at Sunday's paper and uh, they were able to put this and they're going to put it up for the streaming audience and I, I still like the paper this young crowd they like iPhone iPhone that's no paper that's just an iPhone you need to get you a good Sunday paper where you can just you know where you can do what you need to do with it and uh, I read my Sunday paper I'm talking about Jesus and I'm still church I'm a Christian y'all I love the Lord uh, with all my heart mind and soul um, I am uh, but, but this Christian is concerned about what's going on in this world. And on the front page of the paper, broad captions these words, arrested, jailed, charged with a felony, period, for voting. Front page, front page. And they're streaming it now so they can see that. Front page, front page. When I look at that, what do I see? I see an African-American woman. I see an African-American male. Felony. Oh, criminals. When I read the article, a young sister had written some bad checks. Uh, had served her time. Brother had had some issues, had served his time. Uh, what it is, they 
are being, they are known as the Alamance 12 in Alamance County. And the DA is uh, persecuting them, excuse me, I mean prosecuting them uh, for, uh, um, for this crime, past and gone. Both said, I did not know, I did not know that it was illegal for me to vote. Uh, the, the, the importance of this is that when you look at Sunday's New York Times, did I leave my other paper down there? No, 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 here it is. When I look at my, 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 my New York Times and I read both of them, front page New York Times, same article. Wait a minute, Charlotte got it, New York Times, there must be something to this. And the issue is that they're now being persecuted, can serve up to two years if found guilty for voting. Nine have already taken a plea bargain, paid fines, three are fighting it. Uh, one of the brothers uh, said, and then we'll come back and make my point with this. One of the, bro one of the brothers made the comment, uh, and I quote, uh, even when I get this cleared, uh, I won't vote, he said. That's too much of a risk. I won't vote. That's too much of a risk. My grandfather couldn't vote. My uncle had to pay a poll tax to vote. Auntie had to know how to spell hippopotamus to vote. Talk to me, somebody. Uh, uncle Bill was whooped at the poll, uh, just trying to vote. And I'm going to argue that I don't care if you've got to go through hell, you need to vote. There's something behind this. Hold that one right there. Hold that one right there. Then when I looked at my other uh, Charlotte Observer, where's my paper? Where's, where's my paper? Here it is. Here it is. I was reading the paper again. Um, again, uh, this is uh, uh, August 5th, Sunday. Insight. You know what the article says? Are hunters and endangered species. North Carolina voters will decide. I'm a hunter. I hunted all my life. I hunted with my daddy. Uh, I still enjoy hunting. Uh, many of you see a bunny hopping around. I see gravy and onions and garlic and rice. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I, 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 I ain't apologizing for that. If you've never had, if you've never had wild smothered uh, uh, crock pot rabbit uh, with gravy and rice. And if you really want to work it, get some lard biscuits. Come on, Brother Taylor, so you can, so you can sop. Uh, uh, now, now, work with me, work with me, work with me. Uh, now, when I read that as a hunter, the first thing that comes to my mind is somebody in North Carolina is trying to uh, stop hunting. North Carolina voters will decide. That means, as a North Carolina voter and a hunter, I need to go vote. So this is going to bring most rural North Carolinians, males, to the polls. That's what that's going to do. By design. Uh, they're not going to stop me from hunting. I've been hunting all my life, and I'm not going to stop now. I'm coming to, I wasn't coming, but now that you're trying to take my rights away from hunting, that's what that was going to do. What is this one going to do? It's going to stop and impede many African Americans, 22 to 44, from even going to the polls. Why do I want that in North Carolina? I'm finished this and I'm going to say Jesus and, and then I'm going to let y'all go home. Um, um, why, why are you saying this? I, I'm troubled, y'all. I, I am. Um, North Carolina lawmakers have put uh, a constitutional amendment on the November ballot that would change the state's constitution to require voter identification. Wait a minute. The change in the constitutions all have to have voter ID. If you look at the new license, you've got to have three pictures on it. One, two, one at the top, and then I think two at the bottom. Now, wait a minute. Well, back up on that. An earlier law addressing such a requirement was struck down 
in, struck down uh, in 2016 by a federal appeals panel that called it the most restricting voting law North Carolina has seen since the era of Jim Crow. It's on the books now to be voted on in 2018. And, and then it goes on to say uh, uh, the, the ruling Republicans have targeted African Americans with almost surgical precision, uh, precision. So I'm going to scare most of y'all away because you're not going to take the risk and take a vote again. Well, just like I did these two Negroes, I'll do the rest of y'all. So anyone who has any violation, many are going to be scared away from the polls. And then I take that other one and I encourage every rural person in North Carolina to come and vote for hunting rights, a non-consequential amendment. The issue is to get one group not to come and another group to come. My friends in North Carolina, if we don't wake up, we're going to be further back. Then you can imagine. Uh, and and, 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 and if, if it wasn't important, it wouldn't have made front page of the New York Times. I'll leave that one, and if I have time, I'll come back to it. What are you talking about, Cliff Jones? Hindrances. Life brings hindrances. Matthew 13, 19, when the word of God was sown, the evil one came and snatched it from the ground, lest it would take seed. When the word of truth and honesty is placed in your heart, something's going to come. Hmm, I didn't come to church Sunday morning to hear about politics. I wanted to hear about my Jesus. My Jesus. Mm. Okay, you heard about my Jesus. But my Jesus lived life. My Jesus was aware that we live in a world then and now where evil was present and good people, honest people can be duped. And many will hide behind political parties and job titles and careers to do dirt. It's evil. I don't care what you call it. You call it doing business. It's evil. And God is not pleased. And God will not be mocked by evil doers. Jesus was aware of the evil that we have to deal with in this world. So he wanted us to understand that there's nothing that will come to us or before us that we haven't had to deal with and he had to deal with in his own life. So it is no accident now that Jesus says to the disciples, when you pray, at some point in your prayer, you say, deliver us from evil. It's real. be on your yoga mat um. and evil or um right along with you. You can kneel down and pray to God Almighty and if you're not careful evil will kneel right with you and you'll be praying one thing and thinking something else. Come on y'all. And it's just not going to leave you because you're nice. Evil loves nice. And we've got to be very careful as people of faith that we don't allow ourselves become, to become divided and divisive. Talk plain, Cliff Jones. Religious people can be evil. And they've done some evil things. In the name of Christ. 
divide us. They'll have poor people thinking they're better than other poor people. They'll have white people thinking they're better than black people. They'll have educated people thinking they're better than uneducated, uneducated people. They'll have northerners thinking they're better than southerners. Southerners think they're better than northerners. They will have people who are brown thinking they're better than people who are black. That's evil. So Jesus said, when you pray, you must pray. Deliver from. To be set free. I'm in this world. I'm in this system. I'm going to heaven. I'm planning to go tomorrow. Amen. I plan to hang around here a few more years. I, I really do. Uh, I believe in heaven. I want to. Fly, I want to fly away, but 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 I want you know. I, I want some of us to fly together. <laughs> Amen. And I, and I know some of y'all ain't ready to fly yet. So I I just want the Lord to let me to hang around. <laughs> hey. Uh, uh, you know, as tight as uh, Sister Jones and I are. You know, you know she, gonna want, she wants to stay here when I'm gone? <laughs> After all these years, I think, why don't we just sort of go together, you know? You know, until death do us part? She said, yeah, that's what it said, part. And say, well, you... <laughs> <laughs> Life brings things that will hinder us. And Jesus says that there's some circumstances with your smart self that you can't think your way out of. You need the presence of God to get out of it, or at least to endure it. Deliver us. Deliver us. Us. Each one of us will have our own battles. Your battle may not be mine, but if you're living and inhaling and exhaling, you've got a battle. You may want to live in denial and all that, but, but, but you still are struggling with some things that have hindered you and you still struggle with happiness and self-acceptance and self-actualization and, and finding your place and finding your niche and just enjoying life without all of that other stuff. He says, deliver us. We're in this together. Whether you like it or not, you need me, I need you, and we can do more together than we can do separately. We've got to sort of pull with... We've drifted too far apart, y'all. We've allowed the things of this world to pull us apart as a people and as a faith and as a church. And we need to work together to get ourselves closer together to do God's bidding here on earth. Oh, I know that in January that there's going to be a crowd that's going to be pulling after my pinky finger and wanting to hook up and rock. We shall. I'm tired of rocking and hooking my finger. You got my finger, but you've got your foot on my back. Take your foot off my back, then give me your finger. We have got to work together as the people of God to do what God would have us to do. You need me. Sometimes you may be able to walk around with the crowd but the day will come when you will realize, forgive me, that you're just a spook beside the door. <laughs> Deliver us from evil. I would that I could tell you this morning that that is a fantasy, that you can click your heels three times and it'll all be well. I would, I could tell you that the land of Oz was real. But the world in which we live, these nations, these leaders who are leading us, were not always leading us in a godly way. And the people of faith, we've got to rise up and stop just sitting over in the corner praying about it. We've got to talk to our younger sisters and brothers who have had some bad breaks in life. And the only reason they have a felony is because they didn't have money to pay for a high-powered high attorney. Uh, 
so that instead of a felony, they would have a misdemeanor and have their record sponged before they left the courthouse. Most African Americans haven't had the privilege of having that. So baby, if that's the hand that you got, you got to deal with it. Instead of looking behind and crying about it, pick your head up and lift back your shoulders and, and look unto the hills from whence cometh your help, knowing that all of your help comes from the Lord. The old church used to sing, a better day is coming by and by. I, 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 again, I'm not just going to wait till I get to heaven to have a better day. But I believe that I can have a better day right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I believe I can have a better day in these United States of America. But I know that as God's people, we've got to walk together and have faith and help one another. If I'm down, help me up. I don't need you to talk about me and cuss me and tell me how bad and dirty I am. I need you to help me to get up on my feet and let me be what I can be as a child of faith, knowing that God is a good God. And if you would just walk by faith and trust the Lord in the circumstances in this world where there is evil, God will take care of you. Well, I finished now. I read that passage from Revelation from the very beginning because I wanted you to know that evil didn't have the last word, that the day is coming when all of those tricksters, I believe that with all of my heart, just like I believe God created the world, I do believe that there is a judgment day that's coming and, and that I've got to trust in God, knowing my God is able to take care of me. I read the record the other day and read it closely and it said the day will surely come when, when Lucifer, the devil, Satan, and all of its imps and angels will be bound with a chain and thrown somewhere where they won't trouble me no more. And I'm glad to report this morning that God will take care of you. I know that life is not always easy. I know that you haven't always had the breaks. But take what you got if it's broken and fix it. And say the Lord is my rock and my salvation. Take what you got and put your head in the air and say I know that the Lord will make a way somehow. Just say, I, I know that the Lord has brought me too far to leave me right now. God is a good God, and you need to give him the best of your service. Amen. Amen. And amen. just over yonder but he's here he hasn't forgotten about you Rem Jones but I'm catching hell he hasn't forgotten about you he wants you to learn how to thrive in hell he wants you to learn how to be cool in heat <laughs> he wants you to learn how to be happy with nothing and then as he blesses you with more and more you will know that it was nobody but the Lord who has blessed Don't give up, y'all here. Young folk, don't y'all give up. Don't you throw in the towel. We need you. We need you. We need each other Amen. as we walk together by faith and not by sight. This morning, if there's someone here who has not experienced Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, this is not a time to be proud. This is a time to be humble. If you've never experienced Ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins and to come into your life as your Lord and Savior. I extend to you an invitation for Christian discipleship. If you are not united with a church family, I'd love to have you to join the friendship family. We're God's children where we can work and grow together into what God is calling us to be. So the appeal, when I say I extend you an invitation, that's a time for you wherever you are just to walk on up here and say that, that I'm, that I'm going to give my life to Christ today. I don't care what people say. I don't care that it ain't about them. It's about me and the Lord. Why don't you come on in and give your life to Christ? Yeah, work with it.
He gives me. Amen. 